Hello loved ones, thank you for joining me today. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome to the family. Today, we will be reviewing Married at First Sight Season 16, Episode 1, Marry Me in Tennessee. The journey has now begun. We get to meet family and friends, see the cast interact with one another, get a sneak peek of the action that happened at the bachelor and bachelorette party, go wedding shopping, and see our first couple approach the altar. This was an exciting jam-packed episode. If you are passionate about a particular cast member, please see the timestamps in the description box. To be a part of the congregation, please subscribe. To be part of the conversation, please comment. And to be a part of today's offering, please drop a like in the collection plate. With that, let's get started. We start at 14 days until the wedding day, and it is time for our couples to share with their family and friends. And you know we love this part because this is when we get to see the real deal. For this particular segment, we get to the cameos from each cast member where they share more about themselves and then we get a view of the, it is 14 days until the wedding day and it is time to share with their family and friends. For this particular segment, we get a cameo from each of the cast members where they share more about themselves and also their view related to the process. And we then see them share the news with their family and friends. So let's begin with Kirsten. Kirsten is 32 and her tagline is Miss Great Expectations. And we will see she has some great expectations. Kirsten shares that she was raised by a single mom of three children. She says it bothers her when people don't do things her way and sometimes she has to let it go because you don't always get things your way. And I can relate to that. I feel that way too, but I'm glad she said that you just have to let it go. I don't know if she'll really be able to do that, but I feel like that's reality. Some things you just gotta let go. Everything is not gonna go your way, but we will see if that really plays out for her during the season. She says she's been picky all of her life. She's picky with food, with hair, with clothes, and with men. If she's picky with me and she may not want to be on Married at First Sight. She wants the experts to find her the man of her dreams. I feel like that expectation is way too high. She puts a high standard on men because she sets a high standard for herself. She has a master's degree and she is looking for someone who is as good looking as she is. So she is full of confidence. And I think that looks are in such of the eye of the beholder that I think Shaquille looks great. But whether she's gonna see that, I'm not sure. She's a real estate agent. She says she wants him to be physically fit, tall, handsome, hardworking, well-dressed, nice teeth, face base, someone who will come to church with her, positive mindset, ambitious, because she is all of that. I think that Shaquille meets her list, but you know, I think it's gonna be the attraction factor that lets us know if this couple is going to make it or not. It's now time for the family reveal. And she has an outdoors luncheon with her friend Elise, her mom, Lavanya, and her cousin, Takina. She says she wants to be married and she wants kids. She says her parents are getting old, her words, not mine, and she wants them to be able to drop off her kids with her parents. She got so emotional when she said it's kind of hard for her when she sees other people being happy and married, especially colleagues and family members. She says she wants that. I love the emotion of it all because it showed that she really, really does want this. 
And you all know, I be looking out trying to figure out who is a recruit, because I think that recruits don't take the process as seriously. Her mom was so emotional, and this was one of my favorite parts. Her mom affirmed her so much, said how much she loved her. She spoke very highly of her. And her mom said, she is a prize. And I thought that was so sweet. I love to see mother and daughter relationships because I had such a great relationship with my mom that I love the sweetness of a mother-daughter relationship. That was just priceless. She said at the beginning that her family would be protective of her about, you know, doing this and marrying a man that she didn't know, but they seemed exactly happy. They seemed overjoyed, didn't seem like they had any anticipation or negativeness about this experience for her. I am nervously rooting for Kirsten. I hope that her Christian love within her just wells up and she gives Shaquille a fair chance because I just I love that they both talk about their faith out loud and awesome and just use those little Christianese you know blessed and ordained and different things that I hear them say I'm like oh my gosh like I feel like they really do have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm just amazed and I just admire that and I want them to showcase that on TV, and I know they don't hold the keys to represent every Christian, but I would really love for them to showcase Christ in a positive way that may encourage viewers. So tell me if I'm putting too much on them. Oh, tell me if I'm putting too, too much on them. I had the same hopes for Chris and Paige, and that didn't turn out well. And I still think both of them are Christians because we're not perfect. We are sinners saved by grace. So. You know, I'm not faulting them or saying anything about their relationship with the Lord, but I just wanted to be showcased in a positive light and show how the power of God can help us through the things that we encounter. So if she doesn't like him, I'm hoping that she would just pray to the Lord and, and the Lord will change her mind and heart and we can see that revelation on TV. So I don't know. Let me know if that's team too much. Let's move on to Shaquille. Shaquille is 31 and he is the devout workaholic. I love his cameo. He said he believes God has put him on this planet to do a lot. Everything that he has done in his life, God has provided, but he had to go through trials and tribulations to understand. I was like, preach, brother, preach, preach on. I love that. He tells us that at age seven, his family was in a bad car accident. Him, his mother, his two sisters, and his brother. And when he woke up, he was wrapped around a fence and it changed his life forever. And I think things like that can really do that. So what is your defining moment? What is a moment in your life that has just changed your life forever? After that, he said he could not play sports and he focused his attention on academics. He now serves as the executive director of enrollment services at Tennessee State University and is working towards a doctorate degree. I was really surprised that he tells us exactly where he works at Tennessee State University. Cause I would think that in order to say that like that on national TV and just put that out there, then you would have to get permission from the university in order to, you know, identify yourself with them. And I would think that if the university gave him approval to identify himself like that, then they must really believe in his character that he's not gonna do anything that would embarrass or cause just a disdain or dislike for the university. Because whatever we put out there of who we are, we represent that. So I was really surprised about that. He says it all the time, he uses a name. Like I would think that he would just say he's a executive director of enrollment services at a university. So I think that this is a good thing you know, positive thing for him. Let me know if you guys think anything differently about him being able to use the university's name on the television show. 
although it's true so i mean it's not slander he's telling something that's true but i don't know i was surprised what do you think about that dating has been hard for him because he found himself in long distance relationships due to constantly moving from job to job in higher education. And I do know some people who are in higher education like that, and they're not teachers or professors, which is more opportunities, but they are more of staff in terms of the behind the scenes staff. And they do, I mean, I know someone who is a university vice president and they've moved like four times so that they can climb the ladder, ladder and get to where they go. So I can definitely see him being in a relationship and having to move. And I mean, depends on how far he wants to go. And I wonder what Kirsten want to be open to moving. She is there and her, it sounds like her family is there because she is a native of Tennessee. So her family is there in that same area. I think it was Kirsten, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's her who, she's a native of that area. So I'm not sure if she would be willing to just get up and move. And I'm not sure, I know as a real estate agent, I think you have to become an agent in whatever state you are buying and selling real estate. So it may be fluid if it's easy to, you know, pass the test and be an agent in another state because I think that the skill of selling homes can translate to any state. It would just be the licensing criteria. So. I don't know. I don't know if this will cause him a problem in this particular marriage or if he would be willing to just be at Tennessee State and that is where he will finish out his career or do something different. He says coming home and it's empty, it's very different. And his life has been busy. And with this opportunity, he thinks that it'll be better because it starts with commitment. And then for his reveal, it was so funny. So Shaquille, he met his friends, Tasha, India, and Christian for lunch. And he did not waste any time. He said, I know you all see cameras and let's get straight to it. I'm getting married at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't use those words, but that's what it sounded like to me. Let's just get to it. And when he said it, it was crickets in the room. And Tasha said, to who? It takes another person to get married. So of course he clearly wasn't in a relationship because they was so surprised. So we won't see any hidden girlfriends popping up for him. He says that he has prayed on this and God has shown him so many signs. He thinks his purpose to moving to Nashville was to find his true love. And although I love that statement, God has shown him so many signs. However, it really does get us in trouble when it doesn't work out the way we want it to. That's just like Paige who said that her marriage to Chris was manifested by God, which is what started me reviewing this show on YouTube because that was like so overwhelming to me that I had to get on here and talk about it. So yeah, so I hope that the signs that he has received and I'm fine if it doesn't work out if you still stick to your statement. But most Christians, what they do is when it don't work out, they, oh, I heard the look, Lord, look, Lord wrong or now he gave me a different message. I feel like in terms of marriage, he's already told us in his word that we are to be committed and nothing should separate us. So I don't know. I don't know if he, because if he feels like he's really heard from the Lord and the Lord has shown him many signs, I think he's gonna put a greater effort into it to make it work, to buy, try to be committed to what the Lord has asked him to do. But. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But he said he is ready and he is tired of being alone. Pastor Cal said, Kirsten has high expectations for what she wants in a husband and the driven and accomplished Shaquille will certainly meet and exceed her expectations. He says this is the ultimate power couple. Isn't that the words that he used for Stasia and Nate? So I don't know. We'll see about that. But that was Shaquille and Kirsten's 
What do you think about them? What did you think about their family? What do you think about their cameo before they meet their spouse? Let me know what you think in the comment. Let's look at Dominique. Dominique is 25 and her tagline is the old soul. She describes herself as an old soul. She says that she is more mature than people her age. And I might agree with that because she was raised by a single mom as an only child. A lot of times when you are an only child, you're placed in more of an adult situation because you don't have your siblings in order to play with. And I think that they can mature sometimes faster than their peers. She says her mom is her best friend and she talks to her mom multiple times a day on her way to work, on break, at lunch, on her way home. And I don't have a problem with that because I feel like we will talk to our best friend multiple times a day and just because it's her mom, I don't feel like that makes her a mama's girl or anything like that or too dependent on her mom. I mean, she was an only child. They were together a lot. So the fact that they built a strong bond, I don't know, that makes sense to me. She then called her mom to give insight about her past relationships. Her mom says that she was ready for a relationship and they were not. Her mom thinks she needs someone outside of her box. She says her mom initially applied for the show, but ultimately she decided that it is something that she wanted to do and she wanted to go through. She says that she does not feel that she has had the best luck at picking the right person. She says she may have lacked or feared commitment. So right now, the time is right for her. She says she is looking for a full-time permanent cuddle buddy. I thought it was very interesting because she didn't say anything about looks or anything like that. And she's so young, you would think that she would concentrate on physical attributes and things like that. So I was really surprised that they didn't highlight any of that for her. I guess it's not that she didn't say it, but they didn't highlight it for her. Now it's time for her to share with her friends. And she tells Alexis and Jade. Alexis starts with, I feel like I have not talked to you in a long time. What's going on? which is very interesting because if she is a party girl hanging out with her friends all the time, then it wouldn't be a long time that they had talked or had an interaction or time to catch up. So to me, I don't think that, I think she, her mom is her best friend. I think she's doing things that her mom wants to do like fishing and stuff like that. So I love that they revealed that they already knew. So she had already let them know that they, she'd been going through the process. Dominique said she would have to limit her girl's night out and she would have to check with her future husband. And for me, that was very telling because she sounded like she would consider the thoughts and the opinions of her mate, which is different than Justin and Alexis because I feel like Alexis was just informing him that she wanted to go out every weekend and not really taking in consideration his objection and his opinions and thoughts about the situation. So that is a very mature sign for Dominique. Her friends were so supportive and they gave her a really big group hug. Jade is excited. She says that Dominique deserves someone who wants to be married and also has their life together because she has her life together. Jade has no concerns about Dominique marrying a stranger because she said she has done wilder things with a stranger. So um, what that is, I have no idea because marrying a stranger is a very big deal. So what do you think about Dominique? I think that many people are really seeing her as this party girl, but I don't see her that way. Just because she's young doesn't mean she is a party girl. And I feel like she is getting that reputation just because she is beautiful and she is young. What is your opinion about Dominique? Let's look at McKinley. McKinley is 34. He's the introverted dreamer and he moved to Nashville from Flint, Michigan four months ago to find love. So he said he moved to find love. So do you think he moved for the show? Because the show 
the process takes a little time and it probably takes about four months until they get to the point of filming. So I'm not sure if he moves specifically to apply for Married at First Sight Nashville. He is staying with his second family, which is the Donnellys, who he's known since fifth grade. So if he moved there, then he didn't get him an established place to live he moved in with another family. He says he is introverted and shy until you get to know him for about a week. And then he's funny, outgoing, and sassy. It only takes him a week to warm up to you. He is the youngest of three. He has an older brother and an older sister. His siblings have their master's degree, but he dropped out of school to start a cannabis business. He is a dreamer entrepreneur. He says his parents have been married for more than 40 years and that's what he aspires to have. He says he thought he was close to it with his ex. They had been dating for a few years and she sent him a text of a wedding ring and he thought she was showing him the ring that she wanted him to give her. But instead, she let him know that she was engaged to another man. He said he was hurt from this. Now for the reveal. They had an outdoor backyard gathering with Timmy, his friend, Tim, the father of his friend, and the mother. And he said he is nervous about getting married because he wants to make her happy. And the dad says, well, you just said it. You just said what marriage is. Marriage is there for you to make her happy. And I thought that was so wonderful. Timmy, which is McKinley's friend, then tells about when McKinley was in high school and they did a talent show performance. And his performance was a love poem to his high school girlfriend. He says that he wants to settle down have a family and find love. Pastor Cal says they are great for one another because they both have similar attachment styles in relationships. Can somebody tell me what an attachment style is? I did not understand what Pastor Cal was talking about. So that's Dominique and McKinley. What do you think about this couple? Do you think they're gonna make it? What do you think about McKinley moving four months ago and instead of getting his own apartment, moving in with the Donald? What do you think about that? And if you remember in my last video, I talked about how he said he was an entrepreneur, but he was working on a job site. So I don't know. We'll have to see what's going on with Mr. McKinley. Now let's look at Nicole. Nicole is 32 and her tagline is serving the sass. She says she is one with a big heart and she is super loving and compassionate, but there is always a hint of sass. That is who she is and she is always serving it up. She grew up with her mom in New York who is a full-blooded Italian and her dad is Jewish. She has a brother and her parents are divorced. She says she may go off on you and when she does, she says she's going FBI, full-blooded Italian. She doesn't do it often, but when she does, you might want to call the real FBI. She has a dog named Charlie who she loves deeply and she cherishes him and she plays games with toys with him. In relationships, she says she pushes too hard to make a failed relationship work and she is disappointed when it does not work because she gave it her all. She says she is ready to be a wife and has lots of love to give. She is looking forward to doing the little things with her husband. And she became so overwhelmed when she re referred to Charlie as our dog. And I love that she referred to Charlie as our dog instead of my dog, because that means that she is thinking in terms of we instead of me and I just loved it. She revealed the news to her three friends, Zach, Jackie, and Brian. Now she said two of her three friends didn't know she was going through the Mary at First Sight process, but I could not figure out which one of them knew. They all looked very surprised as this as if this was the first time they were hearing the news. She feels hopeful about this and she has not felt hope like this in a very long time. Now let's look at Chris. 
Chris is 36 and his tagline is Mr. Nice Guy. He says it isn't in his DNA to be a mean person. They say that nice guys finish last, but he hopes in this situation, he finishes first. He likes to make people laugh, be comic relief when possible, and do impersonations. He is a hopeless romantic and does not believe that chivalry is dead. He likes to walk on the street closest to the cars, open doors, giving flowers for no reason. He says divorce to him would mean failure. His parents divorced when he was young and that is one of his fears. He says he wants someone who is similar to him. Nice, a giver, caring, put him before themselves and he will put them before himself. He is looking for his forever person. And I believe that Nicole is all of those things. I think she is nice, a giver, caring. I think that they can do really well if he can take her over the top personality. It sounds like she's willing to compromise in that area. So I initially said no for this couple, but I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling hopeful. Now for the reveal. Chris brings one person, his friend Bo. He gets right to the point and says, you're here because I'm engaged. He says he has never lived with a girl or been engaged and now he is taking the plunge. Bo says that Chris is the nicest person that he has ever met. Chris says that nice guys finishing last may be true, but he's not gonna change who he is. He is looking for someone who is genuine and real and he is going to do what he can to make her proud of him being her husband. So I love that, that he is focusing on pleasing his wife. Pastor Cal says that Chris will be a safe space for Nicole and quirky Nicole never takes herself too seriously. This marriage will lead to puppy love and a marriage that will last a lifetime. So we'll see. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about Chris and Nicole? Do you think they're a good match? Now, as I rethink what I've said before in the past, I think that they may be a good match. I think that they might be able to make it. Next, let's look at Jasmine. Jasmine is 31 and her tagline is the queen without a king. She was Miss Virgin Islands and she won Miss Tennessee twice under two different pageants and she has held two national pageant titles, the last being Miss United States of America 2021. Cheerleading is her life and passion. She coaches six days a week, 10 competitive teams. She is in a good space in life and the only thing missing is a husband and children. She wants someone who is committed and ready to be a husband. She is single because she can be stubborn and not take the time to invest in her relationship. She is a relationship girl. All of her relationships have been four to five years, but she's never made it to that next. I heard a YouTuber commenting on Jasmine's teeth. I was totally bothered by that. But what that tells us is to go for your dreams, even if you don't fit the definition of perfect. This young lady is beautiful. And if she would have let her teeth stop her, she would not be the title holder she is today. So do not let your dreams pass you by because you don't think that you perfectly fit into what they are. She is a pageant girl. So I want to go Jasmine. Thank you so much for going for your dreams and you actually won. And I think that we should just be very careful and mindful when we highlight appearances because you know, hey, there could be a different reason for anything that we face physically. For her family reveal, she was with her whole family on game night. She had her aunt Patricia, her sister Taylor, her brother-in-law Charles, her brother Parnell, and her cousin Adrian. She says she has been raised with a, an extremely close family. They do everything together. They have family trips, family reunions every year. It is super important to her to have the support of her family. She was concerned about her Aunt Pat. She says she's always had a lot to say about her previous relationships. She's very direct and straightforward. 
and there is no question about how what how and what she feels so she was a little nervous to reveal this news to her family she did it at a game night and she introduced the game never have i ever and she says never have i ever married a stranger when they figured out what she was saying they were so excited they just screamed and you know was very happy for her, just jumping around it was so cute to see them be so 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 excited I love the things they said about her. They said, you are talented, you are beautiful, you make your own money, and you deserve to be happy. The guys that you have been with in the past, they did not respect you enough to see what they had before them. And I thought that was just wonderful. I love when we talk about things of endearment or affirmations to our family and friends. I think that that is what we should be and we should be supportive and encouragement. So I'm always, I love to see that even play out on the screen. Next, we have Aris. He is 39 and his tagline is reformed and ready for love. At 28, he was ghosted by his girlfriend. And although he had done that to others, he spent almost a decade having his guard up from that experience. His mom had him when she was 19 and in 1994 his father was murdered and he never had a solid stepfather after the passing of his dad. He was looking for the perfect person but slowly came to the realization that the perfect person does not exist. He says you're looking for the perfect, for perfect person but when you look at yourself you have flaws and I thought that was a great revelation. He saw an example that he wanted to emulate in the father of one of his ex-girlfriends. So I'm really glad that he had an example to, to go by. He wants someone who can elevate him, lift him up, and hopefully join him on the journey of helping him become better and do the thing called love and be married. So although he's the reformed, I guess, playboy, he seems like he is ready for love. For the reveal, he tells his cousin Fallon, his friends Harold and Charles, and his mom Lori. He says, I've not told my family and friends about getting married. I think they're going to be shocked and hopefully everyone is going to be super supportive. But even before he goes in, he says, my cousin Felina she is not going to hold back she is gonna tell how she feels so he already knows that you know hey she is going to be open and honest about what she thinks about this they thought they were there possibly to celebrate his new job so he just recently got a new job which will probably be stressful because when you get a new job you got new responsibilities and you're trying to adjust to that so to do that and do married at first sight, I don't think that's going to be an easy task. He then announced that he is getting married and they are shocked and they actually say, are you serious? They found you somebody? <laughs> One of his friends says, they placed you last, huh? You were the last, they were the last to match you. I mean, they were really digging on him. Fallon expressed that he is not ready, no experience in traditional relationships. He's never shared a space with anyone. He's never been in a truly committed relationship to just go from playing the field to married in two weeks. That is not gonna work. It's extreme. And she says that he should walk away. And my thing about it is she said the things that she uses that he's never been in a traditional relationship, which might be a problem, but also he's never shared a space with anyone. And that comes up several times throughout this particular episode. Is that a thing? I mean, I would think that most people who get married has not shared a space with their spouse. So let me know if that's a thing, because I think he mentioned it a couple of times. Felina mentioned it. I think um, Chris mentioned it. So I'm not sure if it's a thing that you're supposed to live with somebody before you marry them. Let me know what you think in the comments. I love the interaction. Each person spoke their piece and everybody listened quietly. Eris did not get defensive. I like that. I feel like that is how a conversation is supposed to go. And I think it was a lot different than Justin and his brother when Justin became defensive. And then it seems like a back and forth like argument. So I like that he allowed her to weigh in on what her thoughts were about the situation. 
And he may have considered it and then decided that, you know, he still wanted to get married. But Pastor Cal says Jasmine and Eris are a solid match. Eris has done a lot of self-healing and is ready to open his heart to a woman like Jasmine, who is accepting and devoted. So he is confident that these two like-minded individuals will come together to create a long-lasting marriage. But I don't know what work that Eris has done. I haven't heard about any work. Didn't talk about counseling or anything. So I'm not sure of what the self-healing that he has done to get over the heartbreak that just set him back for a decade. Now, let's look at Gina. Gina is 35. Her tagline is spontaneous styling and slaying. She says spontaneity is definitely a blessing. She's a firm believer that great reward always comes with risk. She is a salon owner and hairstylist and she has been told that she is intimidating. She is in the process of construction for a brick and mortar salon. She believes that the world is her oyster and she booked the trip to Italy the month before the trip. Now that is spontaneous. She grew up with a single mom, an uninvolved dad, and did not see a successful marriage. Her last relationship was the first relationship that was long-term and it opened her eyes to the fact that she could be a wife. Their lifestyles didn't align because she was career driven and he broke up with her because he was not happy. Oh, she took that heartbreak and poured it into her business. And it's really interesting because I see, feel that Clint has a similar situation as what she described for herself. For the reveal, Gina told her mom, Dancy, and her friend, Julia. They were at lunch and there was a spinning wheel with a champagne bottle on it. And one of them picked it up and said, what does it say? And it says, married at first sight. And she offered them a toast to the fact that she got chosen for the show. Her mom is concerned that with her new business adventure, she may not have time to put into a relationship. But Gina says it's necessary for her to make the time. She does not take the time to realize how much she longs for a relationship until she is around her friends getting engaged or going to weddings. And then she sees those things and wants her forever person. <sighs> so I hope she wants this bad enough to slow down and give some time to her relationship. Next we have Clint. He is 40 years old and his tagline is seeking a first mate. He likes exploring new things, new culture, new food, and different adventures. So I think with her adventurous spontaneous side and him want to do adventures, I think that's perfect. Sailing is his lifestyle. He comes from generations of sailors. It's his dream to get his significant other out on the water and they enjoy each other. He lived with someone for about four years, which proved to himself that he was able to be a family man and could commit long term which is similar to what Gina said about her last relationship. But she left because she had a self-revelation that she was changing into the person that he wanted her to be and not being her authentic self. So both of the mates left. I don't know what I think about his mate leaving because he was trying to make her be something different, which now makes sense about what they said on the kickoff special about him wanting her to conform or be like him. And I think they got it from this statement because I think they see more than what we see. He has experienced a lot of things in life that most people have not. He started flying planes because Top Gun was his favorite movie. He feels there's more and believes the missing component is being married and having that true love. So I hope that they make it. I think that they can. For the reveal, he tells his friends, Aaron, Andrew, Anthony, and Ted, and he meets at one of their homes. And they're inquiring about what his next adventure will be. And he's kind of alluding to sometimes cha plans change. And he then lets them know that he's been chosen for Married at First Sight. 
And they say that it's crazy to marry someone that you just met. And Clint says one of his mantras is embrace the crazy or embrace the difference. He only has one speed and that's full throttle. And the friends say they are more scared for the future wife than for Clint. Pastor Cal says that Clint is looking for a wife who shares his hunger for adventure, whether by sea or air, and we know spontaneous Gina will be his enthusiastic yes girl. Clint will value her and celebrate her successes. So what do you guys think? That is our 10 couples. That is the reveal. What did you think about their family? I think the only family that kind of went negative was Iris's. Everybody else's was, you know, they may have had a couple of questions, but I think that they were really supportive. So let me know what you think by commenting in the comment section. We're now at day 10 and we are at the meet. The day when the cast get to meet one another. The ladies gather together and the men gather together. So what we learned from the ladies gathering is Kristen, Dominique, and Gina, they're all from Nashville. And Jasmine, she turned 32 on the day of the ladies gathering, which is 10 days before her wedding day. Happy birthday, Jasmine. Nicole wants someone who can match her personality and keep her in check. Someone who is not afraid to tell her to calm down a little bit. And she plans to create a safe word when he needs space, he can say pineapple. And Jasmine lets us know that every time she wants kids, she gets a dog and she currently has four. So who said what about who? Which is one of the portions that I love is when we see the cameos and they're referencing one of the other cast members as to what their first impression is or what they think about what they said. So Nicole, thinks that 25 is young for Dominique to get married. Nicole thinks that's just too young. Gina's initial reaction to Kristen is that she is absolutely stunning and beautiful. She's confident, so her husband definitely needs to be a confident man. She needs someone that can hold his own, that has a little swag someone that is able to balance that out. Kristen says that Nicole's safe word, pineapple, will be used a lot. Kristen says that Dominique needs to be at home, cooking, rubbing her husband's feet, catering to her man, enjoying her marriage, instead of wanting a GNO, a girl's night out. This was really interesting because Pastor Cow and Dr. Pepper keep saying that Kristen is traditional. She likes things traditional, but I never saw that from everything we've heard up to this point. But at this moment, if she says that someone needs to be rubbing their husband's feet and catering and cooking, then maybe she is a traditional person. So I, I really want to see that side of Kristen because that's not what I've gotten from what we've seen, what they've shown us so far. But this statement may indicate that she will be cooking and cleaning and rubbing his feet and, you know, all that kind of thing that a traditional wife would do while at home. Jasmine says Nicole is having relations on the first night and she's sure because she has waited for two years and she is going to wait for the text message. At the men's gathering, we find out that both Eris and Chris appear to be concerned about never living with a person before, which is why I asked earlier, is it a thing? You know, it's been brought up a lot. I don't know if it's a thing. I'm not sure if that's something you should be worried about if you are getting married, that you haven't lived with the opposite sex. I think most of us don't, but maybe that's something new. Shaquille showed up for pizza dressed up. So who said what about whom? Aris says, Clint looks like the brownie dude. He looks like he's an outdoorsman. Hopefully his wife is cool with being outdoors and being bitten up by mosquitoes. But I don't know if ours ever heard of Skin So Soft. Skin So Soft from Avon. That would really help with mosquitoes. Iris is gonna call 
Chris, the 40 year vir old virgin, because he has not been intimate in a year. Chris was surprised to hear that Iris and Clint had relation days or hours before they were notified that they were chosen. And Shaquille does not agree with Clint's opinion that a relationship of intimacy should occur on the wedding night. Let's look at the split screen conversations for Gina and Clint. Gina says that she is hoping for someone who has a sense of humor, she does not take life too seriously, and she wants someone who is adventurous. And Clint says, if he doesn't have someone that hunger and thirst for life, he knows it just may not work. So I feel like for Gina and Clint that they are asking for a similar thing, so therefore it should match. Let's look at Dominique and McKinley. McKinley says that he's more introverted because they ask him, what he would do if he had somebody who was more of a party type and he says that there's always room for compromise and he is looking for someone who can bring him out of his comfort zone he says he wants kids that's the top of his list he loves being an uncle and definitely wants to be a father dominique says she thoroughly enjoys a girl's night out and she looks forward to bachelorette parties birthday parties and kind of hanging out with the girls so it's interesting that they're trying to paint her as a party girl but she didn't say anything about going out and hanging out she said more things of events that happen every now and then bachelorettes birthday parties, those kind of things that are not an everyday hangout. It sounds like she's talking about special opportunities to get with her friends, but I'm not sure how that matches what McKinley said because he only responded to a question. And if she's going to these girls night out, then he's not gonna be invited to that. So I kind of think that there was a difference in terms of what they said they wanted at these two events for Shaquille and Kirsten. Kirsten says that she wants two to three kids. She wants to have a boy first and then a girl. And Shaquille said that he wants kids, someone to carry on his legacy. And he talked about how his niece called him and he was so excited because she wants to come to his wedding so that she can have a dance with him. And from that, he said that he wanted his own kids his own legacy to move forward. So I think that Kirsten and Shaquille, that their desires communicated during this event are similar. So we will see how that plays out. We then move on to eight days until the wedding and we go wedding attire shopping with Shaquille and Kristen. Kristen takes her mom and her friend Elise and she says she wants her husband to say I'm such a blessed man to be here today. And I love that she used blessed, which is still a, a term of endearment in the Christian space. She tried on about three dresses. I love the dress that she chose. It was more form fitting to kind of ac accent her figure. So I thought it was a beautiful dress for her out of the ones that she looked at. And Shaquille, he took three of his mentees with him because he doesn't have family in the area. And he says that he is praying that it all works out. And he tried on about three or four suits that they showed us and then came out with this kind of unusual green suit that the young man that he was with approved of. So you know, if kids approve, then hey, it's something good because young people, they will tell you the truth. Now we're one day until the wedding day and we get the bachelor and the bachelor at parties. Jasmine was not into it at all, but the other ladies, they seemed like they had a great time. The stripper was invited by Dominique to take a drink from her pocketbook, which is her shirt. Gina looked like she exchanged some type of food item with the stripper. Nicole was just all out and out wild with the strippers. And Kristen, she was straddled above one of them's head. Nicole is nervous because she says that she hopes that she can make this marriage work. For the bachelor party, Clint had a good time, but the others appeared that they could take it or leave it which I was so glad about because I feel like in most seasons, they really highlight the guys being inappropriate. And so this time they didn't highlight any of that. And I felt like the girls bachelorette party 
was way more wild than the guy's bachelor party, which I think is abnormal. Chris says he deleted all of his dating apps, but Aris says that he just put his on snooze. Chris must have saw the season between Elijah Wan and Katina, and he said, I don't want no mess. I don't want no repeats. Let me just go ahead and delete the app. Honestly, the more I watch Chris, the more I hope that it really works out for him. He really does want this really, really bad. So I really hope that this particular process works out for Nicole and Chris. Cause Chris, everything he says is consistent with what him really wanting this to work and that he is going to give it a good try. We then get to the wedding day and we see the wedding cameo. Chris says this is hard stuff and his nerves are at an all time high, but he finally gets to meet his wife. It is good that he is getting married and he is going to put a ring on his finger. Gina says, it honestly feels like Christmas. It's crazy, but she feels like Santa Claus is coming. And Clint says that there's going to be a Mrs. Webb here within hours. This is something else. Eris says that he just got to the room. There is no turning back. He is never going to be the same after this day. And he looks out the window and says, goodbye to the streets. We then take a deeper dive with Shaquille and Kirsten since they are the first to get married. Shaquille has his three groomsmen with him. He says he received confirmation from God. So there it is again. He's saying he received godly confirmation. So I hope this turns out for him. But sometimes God confirms something that we need to do and it's because he wants us to learn a lesson in it. So we will see how he comes out of this situation. He says he is scared, but his life's motto is to do it scared. So he is scared, but he is going to do it. Shaquille's groomsman commented that he was on time today which may indicate that he is going to have a time management problem and um, i don't know what kirsten will think about that so i don't know if we're going to see that play out on the show that he has a time management issue shaquille spoke about how he is thankful and grateful that he is here due to the number of silent battles he has fought and he became very emotional when he was talking about it. But I love how the fellows just embraced him. They, he was overcome by emotions, but his friends, they supported him. They said, you need to release and we got you. They physically moved towards him to support him. I was almost crying. I love when men are able to express their emotion and to see the support from other men to say, hey, we got you, just let it out and not like man up, don't do that, you know. It was a great sight to see. He says he does not want to continue to live this life alone. He does not know what he will do if this does not work out. We then see him at the altar and his grandmother, Gloria, surprises him at his wedding. He had no idea that she was there. It appears from the conversation that she's had a couple of health problems and he didn't want to bother her, but she is there and she says that she loves him. She's glad he is making this step and keep God first and what is for you is for you. And I think that was great advice for all of us from Miss Gloria. So keep God first and what is for you is for you. We then move on to Kirsten. We see the choreographed bed scene where every time a bride is getting married, her friends rush in and they jump on the bed, which is, I think, a staple choreographed scene for Married at First Sight. But we love it and it's fun, so great job. She says she is picky, but she prays that she likes him a lot and that she is attracted to him. She says she likes guys with a low haircut and a beard, and she does not know if she wants a bald-headed husband. 
which is exactly what she getting ready to get. Kirsten is frantic because her mom is not there and she keeps calling her and the call will not go through. She is concerned that her husband will think that she has no family support because her dad didn't come because he did not want to take a test in the midst of the pandemic. I actually loved, loved, loved the reaction of her and her friends when the mom actually did show up at the door. They just ran, they were screaming, so glad you're here. It reminded me when parents come home and they have little kids and every day when they come home, their kids just run and greet them at the door as if they've never seen them before. And just to think that even at age 32, she still has that love and affection and endearment. And I know they were excited because they were worried too, but it was such a nice sight to see just the excitement that they had over her mom coming in the door. Kristen says that she hopes when she walks down the aisle and they see each other, that they both know that this is ordained. She wants her husband to kiss her if she allows him to. And if not, if she does not like what she sees, then she is going to allow him to kiss her on the cheek. However, she says that she hopes that he will ask her if he can have a kiss because she feels like if he asks her, that will be kind and that will make her feel com comfortable. And since they are just meeting at the altar, she can then tell him that he can kiss her and she'll either direct him to kiss her or kiss her on the cheek. So there is this scene where she is, they're kissing at the altar and he's kissing her on the cheek. And most people take that as a sign that she does not like him, which that could be true. That's a possibility. But another possibility is that she felt he was being rude because he did not ask her if he could kiss her and he just kissed her without asking. And then so, because she felt it was rude, she allowed him to kiss her on the cheek. But her last words before entering was, if he is not the man that I expect, then I will be disappointed. And oh, that is just a heavy scene since now they, you know, production makes it look like she's not happy. Oh, and I hope, I hope, I hope that that is just the trickery of the camera because you know how they do. I don't know. I feel like if they had any other explosive scenes for them that they would show it. But I really do hope that Kristen is interested in Shaquille. And if not at first, if his kindness and his godly heart and just who he is grows on her, where they can make it past the hump and have a marriage that lasts a lifetime. So that was the end of the episode. What did you think? Were you as excited about it as I was? Did you enjoy seeing the family interaction and getting to know the couples a little bit more? I cannot wait till we get through these next couple of episodes so that we can see what the chemistry is between each couple. And we are just having great thoughts for them all. We believe in marriage. We believe in arranged marriage. We believe that marriage can work if you put the time and effort into it. And if you remove yourself and is able to compromise with another person. So with that, please let me know what you thought about this episode. Were you excited about it as well? And with that, please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, live with intention. Be intentional.